This is DW News live from Berlin. Grief and anger in Iraq as the number of people killed in yesterday's suicide. I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Good to have you with us. The city of Baghdad is mourning the victims of the worst bombing attack to strike the city since 2007. Let's get more on the story now with our correspondent, Mohammed Saleh, who's standing by for us in Iraq on the phone. Mohammed, emergency teams are still working to recover bodies. Can you give us an update on what's going on today? Now, Mohammed, uh, Prime Minister Haider al Abadi, he's stepping up security in Baghdad. But security is already tight there. What more can be done? That's... Now, state media in Saudi Arabia is reporting that a suicide bomber has killed himself and wounded two other people outside the U.S. consulate in the city of Jeddah early Monday morning. The attacker report... Police in Bangladesh are trying to confirm the names of the suspected Islamists who killed 20 mainly foreign hostages in an attack in Dhaka last week. Two police were also killed. Some reports suggest the attackers may have been well-educated and middle class. The country's prime minister has been paying her respects to the victims. Now to a surprise announcement. The leader of the UK Independence Party, Nigel Farage, has announced he will step down. Farage said he achieved his goal of seeing Britain leave the EU. And across Twitter... Now, critics of Malaysia's government say there is a growing intolerance of dissent in the Southeast Asian nation. A string of opposition publications have been closed down and journalists jailed. One of the government's best-known critics is the cartoonist Zunar. Last year, he became the first full-time cartoonist to be honored with the Press Freedom Award in New York. But he now faces up to 43 years in prison, and that has forced him to look abroad for support in his fight to remain free. Let's get more on the story now with Shamani Darshani Kalimutu, the executive director of Amnesty International Malaysia, joining us from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, you know Zunar personally, we understand that. He seems very defiant in the face of, face of a possible jail term, uh, but you must be worried for him. All right, moving on to some other news now. People around the world have been paying tribute to the Holocaust survivor and Nobel Peace Laureate Eli Wiesel, who has died. The influential author was best known for his memoir, Night, based on his experiences as a prisoner in the Auschwitz death camp. He spoke to DW back in 2002. Let's hear now some of his thoughts on racism and on remembering the Holocaust. So what is all right, you're watching DW News. We have to take a short break, but still to come on the program. And don't forget, you can always get DW News on the go. You can just head to our website. We're back in one minute. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching DW News. Our top stories. The number of dead from yesterday's suicide. Let's return now to our story about the Malaysian cartoonist Zunar, who faces up to 43 years in prison for political dissent. Let's bring in again Shamini Darshani Kalimuthu, the executive director of Amnesty International, who joins us from Kuala Lumpur. Ms. Kalimuthu, thank you for joining us again. Uh, Zunar is, uh, you know him personally. He does seem very defiant. Are you worried about him? All right, I it looks think like we we're might still be having technical, having, uh, technical <laughs> issues with this interview. Once again, with Shamini Darshani Kalimuthi from Amnesty International. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Hopefully, we can get her back uh, coming up in later shows. For now, we're going to move on to some business news. It seems that uh, the Brexit not, is not only worrying the British. Time to, for the Euro 2016 now, the soccer tournament, and hosts France have thrashed Iceland 5-2 to reach the semifinals. And that means the end of the road for the Vikings. Iceland's fans made the best of the final leg of what has been an incredible journey. Well, it's been a nearly two weeks since Britain's voted to leave the European Union by a small margin. Now, the country is still coming to grips with the implications of that decision. Sports is just one area that will be affected. And the world's most popular club competition, football's Premier League, is likely to be hardest hit. <laughs> 